Being poor is expensive, and that makes buying a reliable car hard for a lot of people. But more often than not, the people getting the deepest discounts also have the deepest pockets. We're talking thousands in savings the average car buyer never sees. So how do they do it? What are the secrets of the rich car buyers that help them get super cars for super cheap? Today on Wheelhouse, we're gonna break down the top five ways rich people get cars for cheap, and maybe even find out how us broke boys and girls can do the same. Huge thanks to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. Our friends at Omaze wanted to give you the chance to win the most American thing possible. And apple pie didn't feel bold enough. They legally can't give you a bald eagle and apparently nobody can own Thanksgiving. So they decided to give you the chance to win this restored 1969 Pontiac GTO with taxes and shipping included. Just go to omaze.com slash donut media to enter for your chance to win. Originally created by automotive of icon John DeLorean, this classic 550 horsepower resto mod muscle car has been expertly modified and restored with a 461 cubic inch fuel injected V8, a Tremec TKO 600 five speed manual, staggered 18 inch Budnick billet wheels, and because Omaze cares about your hands, a Budnick steering wheel. Mmm, that's nice. And you can flex your muscles even more knowing that every donation supports Music Cares, a charity founded by the Recording Academy that helps musicians in need, offering preventative, emergency, and recovery programs to the artists that give so much to the world through their music. So donate today to support a great cause and for your chance to win this restored 1969 Pontiac GTO. Good luck. As much as car dealerships are ingrained in our society, most people don't know how they work. When a dealership buys cars directly from the manufacturer, they're looking at some pretty hefty price tags. It takes an incredible amount of capital to buy an entire parking lot's worth of new vehicles, and the dealership needs some leftover cash for operating costs. So what do they do? Well, the same thing anyone who wants something but doesn't have the cash does. They open a line of credit. The dealership agrees to take a bunch of cars on loan that they think they can sell, allowing the dealership to keep their own capital available for other business operations like payroll and service center costs. But just like with any loan, there are terms involved, and that includes monthly interest. The longer that loan is not paid in full, the more expensive each car really was for that dealership. So how do they pay back that loan and get interest back? Well, that gets passed down to you and I, the consumer. You might be thinking, Nolan, what does this have to do with rich people? I'm gonna tell you, this is the first way rich people get cheaper prices. A wealthy person with stacks on stacks on stacks is gonna walk down into the dealership, lay down a fat down payment, if not buy the car outright, and help generate capital for the dealership to pay back those loans pretty quickly, avoiding additional interest on that vehicle. Therefore, the dealerships will be willing to cut all kinds of deals with that buyer, offering all kinds of incentives for getting that car off the lot and free the dealership from their loan as quick as possible possible. The credit check will be solid, no chance the payments won't be made, and they can rest a little easier about the floor plan financing interest still looming over the rest of the lot. So if you're a solid bet because you've got mad money, you have the upper hand in these negotiations. But being flush with cash isn't the only way to have the upper hand. Another way to get a good deal, if you can afford it, is to own a company. Sounds easy enough, right? Who doesn't have an LLC these days? Uh, I don't. If you do have an LLC, you're golden when you go to buy your next car, because there are so many ways this cuts your final price. First, let me just say two words, company, car. <laughs> Buying the car through your company using company funds will have no impact on your personal credit, which is a good baseline to start from. It will make it company property, but along with that designation comes tax deductions like crazy. If you have a tax advisor who knows anything about what used to be called the Hummer loophole, you can take up to a 100% deduction. Why is it called the Hummer loophole? Well, because the bigger the car, the bigger the deduction. The two vehicle types under consideration are light vehicles and heavy vehicles. Light vehicles refer to anything that weighs under 6,000 pounds. You'll hit April tax time with a depreciation limit on those. If you choose a larger SUV, truck, or van, one say between 6,000 and 14,000 pounds, tax code section 179 gives you a much larger deduction cap than that. Just to give you an example, if you buy a heavy truck for $95,000 and you're in the 35% tax bracket, meaning pretty wealthy, your deduction could reduce your taxes by $33,250. Holy shit, 
So does that mean Donut could buy, I don't know, a Hennessy Mammoth 1000 and write it off? Hmm, interesting. Of course, all of this is dependent on lots of strict IRS tax codes and allowances and things an average buyer is probably not gonna understand. But if you have enough wealth to afford a very fancy tax professional, they can definitely guide you into some significant savings. An advantage someone who uses online tax software on April 14th probably doesn't have. And I use that example because that's basically what I've been doing. And if you're thinking, Nolan, buying a heavy duty car rules out everything I would even wanna drive. Think again. You know what else sits squarely in that category? The Mercedes G-Class. One Mercedes dealer I found even has a page blatantly advertising the deduction savings, which if you're gonna use on the Mercedes G63 AMG 6x6, clocking in at one and a half million for the super pickup, uh, you might wanna look into it. Actually, a lot of luxury SUV dealerships do this. I found a page for Land Rover talking about their tax deductions and how to do that. I believe the Lamborghini Urus qualifies for a heavy duty vehicle. I believe the Audi SQ8 also qualifies. I'm not sure if the Tesla Model X does. We can look into that. Like this is a reason you see so many gaudy SUVs in LA and other metropolitan areas because a lot of people are using them for tax deductions. Even though the law was created for farmers in the first place to buy heavy trucks. Now it's being used by wealthy yuppies in the Palisades. Another nifty loophole to save money while buying and registering a car is to use your company to register the cars out of state. <laughs> See, that company you have is paying off in so many ways. This sounds shady, and truth be told, it sort of is. No matter what state you actually live in, you can, in fact, own a car registered in a state like Montana where there's no sales tax. Delaware, New Hampshire, or Oregon plates are also great if you can get them. That's kind of the gist of it. We actually did a whole video on this subject can click right here. Most of the time when you see a supercar or RV with Montana plates, it's actually a rich person from a different state who does think they're better than you. Another way that rich people can get cars for free is by having a lot of clout. Now, I know this isn't just something you can go do, but being an influencer has its upsides. Influencers get paid serious bucks by car companies just to post a quick pic of them with the brand's vehicles. It happens all the time on social media. There probably isn't a day that goes by that you don't see this kind of stuff. As the years have passed though, the price tags for posts have grown. And this source claims that one car company paid $300,000 for just a few photographs from a specific influencer. Again, it's not a discount or directly just giving them a car that we know of, but much of that cash could buy a few of whatever you want to drive. That would buy a lot of BMW M2s or two Mammoth 1000s. While all those loopholes are great for the rich, what about the rest of us average people without companies or fleets? Well, according to one anonymous ex-car salesman, there are a few things that might help you get closer to the price you want on the car you want, even if you aren't wealthy. First, ask for what you want, even if you think it's too low. Be honest with yourself about your budget. Always remember that the sticker price isn't the final price of the car. There are a lot of factors that go into the actual cost you'll owe, including financing, fees, and any add-ons, like floor mats. Can you afford it now? Be honest. Be prepared and know when to walk out. A lot of people just assume they're getting as good a deal as they can get, but that's never actually the case. They'll probably call you back with a better deal. Car dealers are very good at putting you under pressure and making you feel like you gotta buy a car right now, otherwise, your dad will die. That's not true. Your dad will be just fine. You can walk out and the car will most likely still be there unless it's like a Corvette C8 or a Hyundai Santa Cruz. Either way, I'm still gonna be buying used cars for the time being or not buying a car at all because uh, it's really expensive right now. And I'm not in that 35% bracket yet. It's been years, but the comment still haunts me. More hearse purrs? Was it even possible? How much horse is too much horse? I had to know. Test after test, Hello? failure after Eli. failure. I began to doubt that I'd ever find out. Then, it happened. I think I have it! I think I have it! I've done it. I've done it. Hearse purrs are infinite. So saddle up boys and girls and hit the trails with this 100% scientifically accurate new Hearse Purrs shirt. Available right now at DonutMedia.com. And it features everything that you need to know about pure equine muscle 
A real horse? That'll cost you thousands of dollars. But this pony is $29.98, which is way less than $30. Go ask your mathematician uncle. Hey, we've got a lot of cool merchandise on our website at donutmedia.com. Get yourself a hoodie. You know, it's starting to get cold out, I assume. Not here in LA, it's hot here all the time. Speaking of social media, if you'd like to follow me on social media, hit me up at Nolan J. Sykes. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Be kind, save your money. See you next time.